The most important part of a trap base is making sure the enemies stay trapped once they enter the trap base. Whether that be from a single door, a double door, a garage door, or maybe even a ladder hatch closing behind them automatically. And it's really important that once that door closes, it stays closed permanently. So today, I'm going to show you how. But for this, you'll need a power source, a memory cell, a button, a door controller, and a wire tool. Now to trigger this whole setup, you're either going to need a heartbeat sensor, a laser detector, or a pressure pad. Now if you use the laser detector or the heartbeat sensor, you will need an electrical branch to go with it. Now for this tutorial, I'm going to be using the heartbeat sensor, so I will need an electrical branch. But I'm going to start by placing the power source, followed by the electrical branch, memory cell, button, the heartbeat sensor, and the door controller near the door. First thing you want to do is pair the door controller to the door in order to do that. Whether it's a code lock or key lock you have locked on the door, you want to unlock the door, then interact with the door controller. And if you successfully paired it, you'll have the green light showing that it was successfully paired. Now next, we're going to wire it all up. You're going to need your wire tools and you want to take the power output of your power source and plug it into the power input of the electrical branch. Now you want to take the right side of the electrical branch of the power output Plug that into power input of the memory cell. Next, we're going to do the button. You want to take the power output of the button and plug that into the middle input. So you have three inputs on the memory cell. You have a set, a reset, and a toggle. Now we want to plug the button into the power input on the right side into the reset of the memory cell. Now we're going to take the branch out of the memory cell. Make sure the power output of the left side of the branch is set to two rust watts. Take the branch out power and we're going to run that to the heartbeat sensor. I take the power output of the heartbeat sensor and run that back over to the memory cell and connect it into the set slot on the right side of the memory cell. The last thing we need to do is take the memory cell and plug it into the door controller. Now the memory cell has two power outputs. It has an inverted output and a regular output. Now, in order for the one-way door to work, we need to take the left side, the inverted output, and we want to run that over to the door controller. Plug that into the power input of the door controller. And here's the blueprint for that setup. Once you have it all wired up, if you are using the heartbeat sensor, you want to go over to it and make sure to exclude authorized. If you have include authorized, that means is if you are privileged on the TC and you have access to the space, even if you walk into the base, you will also trigger the heartbeat sensor. Make sure you don't trigger it. You want to make sure you exclude authorized. Now the memory cell has two lights. If they're both green, that means the trap has already been triggered. Now to reset it, you simply just press the button and that'll reset the trap indicated by a red light and a green light. Now, if you're not using the heartbeat sensor or the laser sensor, then you don't need the electrical branch. Now you'll wire in the button to the memory cell as before and then the door controller to the memory cell as before also. Take the power output and you'll just plug it into the bottom of the memory cell. Now if you're using the pressure pad, you'll notice it has two connections, a power output and a power input. And that's because the pressure pad actually produces one rust watt when it's stepped on. And that alone is enough to trigger memory cell. So now if anyone ever walks into the base, it'll also trigger the door. And if you step on it again, it will not re-trigger it as the memory cell is set. And once it's set, you can't undo it until the button is pressed. And that is how you build the one-way door. And if you want to see more guides like this, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. But until next time, I'll catch y'all in the next video.